Minister for Arts Catherine Martin TD launched a new pilot grant scheme to the tune of 2.6 million euro to help boost the nighttime economy in Ireland, a sector that we know faced particular hardship over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. So will the scheme help us see our urban centres revived and rich in culture? Or does it miss the mark somewhat? Well, Fine Gael Senator Mary Siri Carney is still with us. I'd also like to welcome the studio singer and actor Paul Byram. And joining us via Skype is the DJ and campaigner with Give Us the Night, Sunil Sharp. Uh, Sunil, I'll start with you. You've been working uh, with the government and with Minister Martin to try and bring forward some of these initiatives. Uh, what do you make of what she's announced today? Yeah, I mean, we've been aware of the, of these uh, measures and this particular action for quite some time. It's been in the works for probably the best part of a year and a half now. I'd say the execution of elements of the, the report itself and some of the actions have been very slow. Um, and there are various reasons for that. For this particular action, I mean, we have to give credit to the department. We don't always have a lot to shout about um, in our industry. And today is a very welcome initiative um, and it will impact on um, obviously traditional nighttime economy businesses like pubs, clubs, restaurants. But I think there are other organisers, other spaces, other types of uh, businesses who may find opportunities within this initiative. You know, uh, this initiative, anything from, you know, bookshops to barbers to record shops. I mean, the, the list is endless. Coffee shops. I mean, we definitely need to bring more life and activity into our urban centres and, and our towns and rural areas as well. And I think there's uh, a, a lot of opportunity here for a lot of different individuals and organisations. Uh, Paul Byram, you're in an industry which has really struggled in the last couple of years. Your own uh, work rate and, and income would have been quite a lot down. Um, people would think that this is the sort of scheme that people like you would welcome, but you're not so convinced about this. I, I just worry. I mean, obviously, look, it, it's important to say that the government have tried to help our industry in a number of ways over the over the pandemic. And it has been challenging to try and help everybody. I mean, we've had a show tonight of listening to a whole load of industries that are struggling. And, mm. and especially now with, with uh, things going up, you know, the, our industry is harder now than ever before to be in it, should I say. And I kind of worry that, you know, the only stipulation is that artists must be paid and entertainers must be paid. That's the only stipulation. There's no, uh, there's no stipulation as to how much they should be paid. You know, what percentage of the funding that's granted to, let's say, a bookshop or a pub goes to the artist. And, and I, I, I feel, I, I worry that maybe it's more catered towards helping these venues as opposed to helping entertainers. And the entertainers, by and large, in a lot of these pubs and clubs and whatever else, they don't get paid very well. It's not great pay. So, and for example, so if, if there was an event in, in a bookshop or a comedy club, for example, you're worried is that the, the performer might only get a fraction of it and that the venue then just pockets the difference and takes it as a subsidy? Well, I think there's, there is stipulation in there to, to prevent that. But I do worry that, you know, I, I can't understand why the artists aren't getting um, maybe more involved in this as to how, how much they're actually getting paid. That's what I'd, I'd, I feel they should be getting maybe a lot more of the of the pie, you know, and I, I, I worry there's 2.6 million there. I personally speaking, and I'm coming from an artist's point of view, I feel that the 2.6 million would be greatly welcomed within people that work in the late night and entertainment industry. And maybe if they were to approach venues and say, look, this is the funding I've got, would you be interested in hosting a night? At least they're in control. They're possibly getting more of the money. Whereas bars, for example, they're doing all right financially, you know, on the old pint or whatever else. And, and the guy sitting in the corner might get 200 quid for the night, you know, and, okay. and that's, that's what I worry about. To then, be let's put that then to Mary Siri Carney. Mary, it seems like it might be a good idea in, in principle, but that the execution might be a little off. Can we be sure that the money is going to go to, to the performers for whom it's actually intended? I suppose it's important to, to look at it that there are two strands here being provided for. One is the licensed premises and then the other are, are non-licensed premises, uh, cafes, galleries, uh, bookshops, all, all of those. And one thing that one organisation that came to mind today for me was the, the St. Michael's Resource Centre, uh, Safety Resource Centre in each core for, you, for um, Bloomsday. Uh, performed, did a performance of Ulysses in Golden Bridge Cemetery. Uh, so applicants to this will get a maximum of 10,000 uh, euros. They have to run four events in that. Uh, it allows for creativity, it allows for uh, photography uh, events, it allows for poetry, it allows for uh, diversity. And, and so I think in actual fact it will promote creativity. It's important to note that it's a pilot scheme. So yeah. I, I suppose all pilot schemes are subject to review. And at that point, I, I think under the review to hear from artists and to, to see how we address concerns, you know, valid concerns that Paul is, is raising um, and to ensure that. But that is coupled with a, a proposed extension of the outdoor seating and the, the that, that 
that change in culture may be one of the few mm. good things that came out of COVID, that we have this change of, of where is the venue, mm. of where we, we sit and how we, we extend but, the, but, the, the covers. But, of, but, but, any, but when you talk anything. about extending outdoor seating, is that not exactly what, Paul, what you're talking about, that it ends up becoming more about trying to subsidise the entertainment economy, but not necessarily about the performers the themselves? The performers. And I, I think actually in this, you're not allowed, if it's an outdoor event, apply for the, the funding. Um, you know, I, there is also no stipulation that says that bars, which we all know over the years, would, if they're having a comedy night, they'll charge 15 at the door, you know, and maybe they'll, you know, take 10 for the bar and then five will go to the comedians, you know, uh, or the, uh, the singers or the actors or whatever it might be that they're hosting. And so I wonder, do they get their funding and then they can still charge at the door? Mm. I mean, like, I think fundamentally it's getting harder to be an entertainer in this country, especially late night entertainers. You know, you're traveling the cost of petrol where we know is through the roof. So you're traveling from one town to the next. Yeah. It's near impossible in this country now to get insured by any company mm. on the car if you say that you're a singer. They just won't entertain it. Because they think your, your income is too... Nothing to do with your income. In, that they put it down to that you're late night traveling or that you might be tempted to have a drink after your gig or you might be high risk. Okay. Um, so if you ring any of the insurance companies it's, and you say, hi, I'm a singer, I'm looking to get insured on my Audi, they'll say, listen, yeah. thanks a million, take care. Um, you know, needless to say, getting rent, getting mortgages, all of those things okay. are extremely difficult for, for, for singers and entertainers. And I just feel if there's 2.6 million going mm. for late night entertainment, let's sure look at giving it to the entertainers. Yeah.